Hey there, algebra folk. I'm looking at systems of equations. So a system of equations is actually two equations. And I'm going to start off with this lovely comic um, from Foxtrot. So let's read through it real quick. I can't seem to do, or I can't do these stupid math problems. And why am I so stupid? If 2x plus y equals 60 and x plus 2y equals 75, solve for x and y, how the heck do I figure that out? And this is um, her, her, her brother. I can't remember his name right this second for some reason. If two shirts and a sweater cost $60 and a shirt and two sweaters cost $75, what does each item cost? The shirts are $15 and the sweaters are $30. Duh. And Big Brother says, you aren't stupid, Paige. Just weird. Come back. You still haven't told me how to solve the problem. Well, you did, Paige. X is 15 and Y is 30. Because if you know this relationship, some of you can do that in your head. I can't. My husband was able to do it in his head, but I, I can't. Um, I, I Probably because I've been conditioned to think math, 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 math. And I know how to do it on paper. Which to me is easier than trying to puzzle it out in my head. We're going to learn how to solve this system of equations. And this time we're going to start by talking about what it is what um, you know what we're looking at and we're gonna learn about solving by graphing on the coordinate plane. A system of equations is a set of two or more linear equations. So you can have a set of three. Um, usually if you have three equations you have three variables but we're gonna be sticking to only equations with um, two variables. The solution of a system or to a system is the ordered pair or ordered pairs that make the system true. So that would be that the ordered pair xy that is the same for both equations. We are going to solve systems both graphically and algebraically. This video is all about the graphically part. Algebraically means on paper and we'll learn that in a subsequent video. There are three outcomes possible when we graph two lines. Okay, Most of the time you get this possibility. Two distinct lines that cross someone, some, uh, one another somewhere on the coordinate plane. They intersect at a point. These lines have different slopes. And the equations are consistent and dependent. And these are vocabulary words that I am going to ask you to know. So a system where they cross is consistent because it has a solution and independent because it's one solution. Second possibility when you have two equations is that you could indeed actually have the same line. Now this is a weird one. I know you're probably thinking that doesn't make any sense, Ms. LeCompte, but it, it actually does. You can have two lines that look like different equations on paper, but turn out to be the same line. Um, in fact, if you solve one for y, it usually matches the other. The lines are the same. Okay, the two equations are the same. They have the same slope and y-intercept. This system is consistent and dependent. So we say it's consistent because it has at least one solution. But what it is is dependent. Because it turns out that every single ordered pair that's on that line is a solution to the system. We say that it has infinitely many solutions, which should sound familiar um, kind of like some of the problems we've solved earlier this year where you had uh, all real numbers as a solution. And the third possibility when we graph two lines is that the two lines could be parallel. If they're parallel lines, they're never going to cross. They have the same slope, but different y-intercepts. This system is what we call inconsistent because it doesn't have a solution. No solution at all. All right, make sure you get this information into your notebook, please, before we continue on with an example. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Here we have a system. Sorry, another pause for a small coughing fit. Here we have a system. It is a system of two equations. We have y equals x plus 2 and y equals 3x minus 2. Notice the different slopes. Automatically, when you have two different slopes, you automatically have a system that has one solution in the system. And I know that because if the two lines have different slopes, they have to cross somewhere. The only way they're parallel is if it's the same slope. And if it's the same slope and the same y-intercept, then you have infinitely many solutions. So I know there's one solution here. And here's the graph that matches this situation. So let's look at which one's which. We have the line y equals x plus 2 in red. So we have this one is y equals x plus 2. So y-intercept to 2, slope of up 1 over 1 to draw the line. And there we have it. And then we have in 
um, this other color, this lovely blue color, we have y equals 3x minus 2. We know that because the y-intercept is negative 2 and it has a slope of 3. So up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. And if you notice, the two lines intersect at the point 2, 4. And that is the solution to the system. So the ordered pair 2, 4 is the solution to the system. Your turn to try one. So let's graph the two lines. I'm going to color code it, but I like using different colors than the previous page. So I'll use purple and green. So I'll use green on the second one here. And we'll use purple on the first one. So the first one is the purple one. It has a y-intercept at 4 and a slope of 2. So rise of 2, run of 1, plot the point out of space there, so I'm going to go the other direction. Rise of negative 2, run of negative 1, plot the point, and continue on down the graph. And I like to draw all the points possible before I draw the line itself. So there's the first line. Now let's do the green one. It has a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of 1. Up 1 over 1 point, up 1 over 1 point. All right. And right there's our solution. I'm going to finish drawing my lines first, though. And so this system has a solution here at the point negative 2, 0. Isn't that lovely? So the two lines cross at negative 2, 0, and that is the solution to the system. Okay, let's try a couple more here. All right, so let's look at this next one right here. Negative x minus 3 and negative x plus 5. Now, I should already notice here that same slope, different y-intercepts. Pretty sure this one's going to have no solution. But let's go ahead and graph the lines anyway. I'm going to switch colors. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice, lovely color there. We'll use those two. Okay, so we'll do this one in this light, nice blue. We'll do this one in this nice pink. So let's start with the blue one, y-intercept to negative 3. Slope a negative 1. So down 1, right 1, plot the points. Or up 1, left 1, plot the points. And we draw our line all the way down. Sorry, it's a little crooked. Forgive me. Definitely not perfect, but you catch my drift there. All right, and then this one has a y-intercept of 5 and a slope of negative 1 as well. So it's also going to go down 1, right 1, or up 1, left 1. All the way back. And there you have it. They are indeed parallel. No solution at all because they never cross each other. So, yep, no solution. All right, how about the other one? Let's see. We'll use bright blue and bright red. Let's do that. All right, we'll use this one will be red. And this bottom one will be blue. All right, so this red one actually is all set up and ready to go. It's got a y-intercept of negative 3 and a slope of positive 3. So up 3, right 1, up 3, right 1. Whoops. Didn't mean to put that right there. There we go. Down 3, left 1 to get that last point. And there's our line. Excellent. All right, now this one in blue is actually not set up very nicely to solve. You know, I, I'd have to solve it for y. So I'd have to take 3y equals 9x minus 9 and divide both sides by 3, which leaves me y equals 3x minus 3. It's the same line. So I can graph right on top of it. And that means that this one has infinitely many. Infinitely many solutions. Now, I couldn't tell that until I solved the second equation for y. Which brings me to my question here, before graphing the equations, how can you determine whether a system has exactly one, infinitely many, or no solutions? Well, that's very easy to answer at this point. Exactly one is differing slopes, so different slopes. Oop, apparently I can't spell slopes today. Try again. Different slopes. Infinitely many that's when it's the two equations, but it's the same equation. I don't have any more space. Same equation. And no solution at all 
Same slope, but different y-intercept. Mm -hmm. Different y-intercept. All right, that's the whole gist of how system of equations works. Systems of equations work when you're graphing them. Now, I think I've got one more, and it's an application problem. So what, is, what the heck is the point? It's actually a super useful skill, being able to solve systems of equations. Tickets for a concert cost 10 bucks each if you order them online, but you have to pay a service charge of $8 per order. The tickets are $12 each if you buy them the night um, of the concert at the door. Write a system of equations. Let C be the total cost and T be the total number of tickets. No, I will not. I will let Y be the total cost and X be the total number of tickets because the C and T nonsense, if you want me to graph it, doesn't make any sense. So the first scenario, the total cost equals $10 per ticket plus $8. The second scenario, the total cost of the tickets would be $12 per ticket. And there's our two equations. And we're going to graph the two equations and find the intersection point. And then we'll talk about what that actually represents. Okay, so I doctored up my coordinate plane a bit here um, and had to pause several times for a few coughing fits. Gosh, I hope this goes away soon. Um, and I'm just numbering my axes up here um, to accommodate my particular data that I have or my equation that I have here. Two equations, actually. Um, so let's graph the one that has um, the slope of 10 and a y-intercept of 8 first. So the y-intercept of 8, um, I actually kind of have to eyeball that right in there. Um, and it's a uh, rise of 10, run of 1. So I'm basically going to be going, there we go, there. So at, you buy zero tickets, conceivably you have an $8 surcharge. Well, you don't, but that would be the idea behind the $10, $10 a ticket plus $8 service charge. Um, so if you buy one ticket, you spend $18, and there we are there. So two tickets, you're spending $28. So that puts us right here. So again, rise of 10, run of 1. Rise of 10, run of 1. Rise of 10, run of 1. So there's our shape of our blue line. And that's, so that's buying your tickets in advance. Okay, just going to go ahead up about that far. Um, but I'm going to clean that up a little bit first. Sorry. There we go. Good enough. Good enough. Good enough. All right, so the red one has a wider up to zero and a slope of 12. So that would be up 12 over 1, which would put us right about here. Up 12 over 1. Again, right here. Up 12. Oh, no. I lied. That one wouldn't. It'd be a little bit higher than that. So 10, 12. So it'd be like there. Up 12. And over 1. We're getting there. So for 3, that'd be 36. And then, oh, there it is right there, 48. So when I draw my two lines, I end up with them crossing right here at 4 and 48, which is where they would match up. Four tickets cost $48 either way. So what does that represent? The point where they cross represents the number of tickets that you can buy ahead or at the door for the same amount. Well, what would be the benefit of knowing that? What would be the benefit of knowing that? Well, what you now know is you know that if you're buying more than five, you want to buy them online. But if you are buying less, so five or more, so five or more, buy them online. Four or less, buy at the door. So you've now figured out what the best deal is. And you know that if you want to maximize your entertainment, that's probably something you would need to do. So anyway, 
that's it. That's our system of equations. That's what we're doing with systems of equations. Get ready to do a whole lot of graphing, and I'll see you guys in class.